Hello YouTube. This is my first ever uh, YouTube video. I may, might make a couple more depending on if people are interested or not, but I'm not planning on making some sort of career out of this and I don't intend on making a bunch of these videos. I had the opportunity to be on the TV show alone and it was an incredible experience. If you haven't seen the show, go watch the show. Um, I watched it for five seasons, thought I understood what was happening. You don't understand what's going on. I wish I could sit anybody down who was interested and explain what really is happening in your mind. And anyways, ask any contestant. You don't get it unless you've been there. But uh, but uh, I'm that kind of guy that I watch a lot of YouTube channels to find products I want to buy. Like if I'm interested in a knife, I'm going to watch every review that's ever been done on it. Um, and then I'm going to watch all of the competitors' reviews to make sure I'm buying the right knife because I don't want to waste my money. And uh, so in that light, I felt like I owed it to all those people whose reviews I've been watching to give a review of a product, um, and especially one that I, I, I'm kind of passionate about. I want full disclosure. The company, the product I'm reviewing is a Weatherwool uh, Anorak jacket that I that I um, uh, I purchased at full price to take on the show. Uh, when I got back, I was so in love with it that I called Ralph at Weatherwool, said, "Hey, I'm in love with it." Um, I want to I wanna put out a YouTube video, put out a shout out while I'm making this video. If you want to send me another product to review, I absolutely will. Um, and so Ralph did. He sent me this one, which is a lighter weight version of the one I took on the show. And he also sent me some Weatherwolf pants, and I'll talk about those at the end. But other than that, that's it. So I'm not trying to, like, give a sales pitch for somebody else. I just want to give a good, honest review. <laughs> okay? Um, so starting off with, like I said, on the show, you're allowed certain items, and I was allowed to bring out a wool jacket. And so, uh, so as I started looking through my collection of wool jackets, I was trying to decide the right one to bring. So the first wool jacket I'd ever been given was this one by Woolrich, and this was given to me by the Anasazi Foundation, who works with kids out of Arizona. Phenomenal jacket, love it, super comfortable. My only complaint is, is if it ever gets windy, it blows right through this jacket. Fast forward a few years, my wife bought me this one from Pendleton. Um, they had taken the wool on the outside, put some thin slate on it, and then also put like some sort of silky liner to make it more comfortable. And then the military issued me this jacket from Woolrich as well. And it's a pile of crap. It just is not a good jacket. It just, I have nothing good to say about it. I've never been impressed with it. Um, and now look at this. You can see my buddy Jake, he left some, uh, some food down in the pocket and a mouse crawled in there and ate it tore a hole through it. But so as I'm looking through my wool, I'm starting to think, well, well what's good and what's bad? Like, um, uh, what's the best I could take out there? And I started thinking, well, what's the, what's the absolute best wool product there is? So I started doing reviews on YouTube, started looking at stuff, and I came across the company Weatherwool. And their price tag is pretty hefty. Um, I mean, not significantly more than its competitors, but it's hefty. And so I called up the company and said, hey, tell me about your product. Why is it so dang expensive? This guy, Ralph, he gets on the phone, he's the founder of the company, and he spends an hour and a half passionately telling me why and how his product is made. The bottom line is he just wants to make the best product there is. Um, and I feel like he's done it. And, uh, and I feel like I can attest to that, having taken it out and lived in it, you know, for the time I was out there. Uh, let me run you through the product. So this is the jacket that I bought. First of all, look at it. It's, uh, it's called their Lynx pattern. It's a camouflage pattern. If you don't think it's camouflage, go take it out on some snowy mountains. It blends in, it's beautiful, it's awesome. Uh, it's one of those jackets though that you could wear and it doesn't look like camouflage. I couldn't wear this and not look, you know, like it was supposed to be camouflage. And this looks like I'm trying to cut down trees. You know, I should have an ax on my arm, but this kind of, I don't know, I like the look of it. And it does blend in. Secondly, the detail he put into this product. Every one of these jackets has a traditional button sewn onto them. Uh, on this garbage, it came off all the time, had to continually re-sew those buttons. This one, they actually put a zipper on the front of it and then buttons. What they did on the Woolrich product is they took the buttons and then they, it's a specific style of button where you can actually weave a piece of webbing the entire length of it. So the webbing goes through the button back up and makes it almost bomb proof so you don't have to worry about those buttons ever ripping off. Next, the fabric himself. When you look at like the Boreal shirt or the Boreal jacket, it's gorgeous, it's a good looking jacket, but the product they made it from 
was a regular military wool blanket. If anybody out there has slept in a wool blanket, they're kind of itchy and scratchy. They're not super comfortable. I mean, I'm not saying you can't do it. They're not horrible, but they are scratchy, and they're not the warmest thing in the world. And so you take this thin piece of wool and you make a jacket out of it. Yes, it's beautiful, but your beginning product wasn't great. I hope that doesn't hurt anybody's feelings. I think the thing's gorgeous, but for the price, for a couple hundred bucks more, what do you get out of this? One of Weatherwolf's goals was to have a wool product that at 15 miles an hour would stop the wind. Is that true? Well, let me tell you my experience. Going out on the show, I kind of was running low on money, so I took out my military-issued wool-rich wool pants. And I wore the wool pants in the bottom, obviously, and the anorak on the top. And sitting out on those cliffs fishing, the top stopped the wind, and my pants felt like I wasn't wearing any. The wind just came right through, to the point I had to start wearing my, my uh, rain bibs over the top of them just to keep the wind from going through. There's a difference in the quality of the weave, and it, I mean, it's, it's, it's there. I could stand in the wind and not feel it cut through this product. Uh, whereas like my other wool, unless they put a liner in it, you don't experience that. Why do they put a liner in wool clothes? Well, for a couple reasons. One, if they make a crappy, cheap wool product to bring the price down, it's gonna be itchy. The end, those fibers are gonna scratch your skin, so they put a liner in there to cover that. Second, a cheap way to make up for the, the weak weave that's in the product itself is to put a liner because that will help block the wind. And so if I want to make a cheap wool jacket, I'm going to put a liner and couple it with wool and that way it kind of gets the best of both worlds. What you're missing is that all of a sudden it's not the wool product you wanted, it's a, it's a hybrid product. And I mean if that's what you're into, that's what you're into, whatever. I don't want to be like an elitist, but I wanted a good solid wool product. All of you know, you know, you, as you go down, the, as you go down the list, if you look at down, down is going to be warmer for its um, weight than, say, wool for sure. Uh, plastic's going to be cheaper, like your um, uh, polyester, not polyester, yeah, polyester or any other type of polypropylene or any other type of plastic that that you use to make a garment out of. It's going to be cheaper than wool. Down is susceptible to water. Down is susceptible to fire. Plastic, polypropylene, or or um, I don't know why the words aren't coming to me right now, it's always like that. Um, but any of those uh, man-made materials, they're going to be susceptible to fire. Wool, wool smolders. You get sparks on you while you're sleeping at night, it just kind of smolders. Wool, if you get wet, you can stay you know, relatively warm. Wool is, is something that a person who's going to live in it for a long time and be next to a fire for a long time, that's the kind of product that uses wool. Ralph then went on and he made the product so it's more functional. So if you look right here, got zippers. Inside that pocket is another pocket. Same thing on this side. Why those are so handy is because as I was out on the show, you know, I started to get depressed, hungry, tired, fatigued. All this stuff's happened and I knew that my, my head game was starting to fall apart. So I got very meticulous about where I put things. This pocket was always my fire rat pocket. This pocket always had birch in it ready to go to start a fire. You come down here to this big old kangaroo style pouch. And inside of it, you can't see it, but there's elastic webbing. And it's sewn at different intervals so that you can take things and stack them in there. And they stay in your pockets as you're out moving around. That little button that we all carry on us for a loan, you know, in case a bear mauls us, that went right there. And then I had my fishing kit. And by the end of it, I, I had every item I wanted on me organized in its place in my jacket at all times. Um, as you start chopping wood and stuff, the downside to this jacket is that it's it's kind of hard to take off. The upside is because it doesn't have a full seam, the heat doesn't escape through all those cracks. So what he did is he puts these vents in the side. There's a zipper that goes from the armpit down. So as you start getting hot, you can unzip those without having to take off the anorak jacket. Um, it's bomb proof. You'd be walking through brush and stuff, you don't feel it. It's quiet. Um, you know, like you take out some of your, your ultralight stuff and it, it, when branches hit it, 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 you can hear it. So if you're out hunting or moving around, this is quiet. It's just a dang good product. You start looking at the price tag and that's where people start to have problems. That Boreal shirt versus this is maybe a couple hundred dollars difference. And what are you getting in quality? You're getting a lot in quality. And my last pitch to you is just, 
if you put a scope on a rifle, you can put a crap scope, a medium scope, or a great scope on a rifle. At the end of the day, your money's spent and you're stuck with whatever you did. If you're buying a snowshoes, snowboard, um, a car, anything, you get what you pay for. It's not an investment. I hate it when people say that. You're spending money and you're not getting a return on that money. Um, it's not investment. What it is is you're not wasting your money. You're going to buy the right product to do the right job. Um, and this by far is the best wool jacket I have ever had in my life. It, it tops all of these. I mean, if I had the choice between this and any one of them, I'd take this any day of the week. The other thing that's cool about it is it comes in this lightweight version versus um, the one I took out on the show, which was a much, much thicker, heavier version. Um, in fact, I liked it so much, or it was so useful to me, I bought this really crappy Wiggy sleeping bag. Wish I'd never done it. Garbage sleeping bag. Maybe I'll do a review on that, but, but um, if you're interested. But at night, I would take off my wool jacket, and I would put it on top of my bow bed, and then put my sleeping bag on top of that, so that my wool jacket, while I was sleeping, could make up the difference for my crappy sleeping bag. I mean, I lived in the thing. Everywhere I went, I lived in that thing. Um, and then take it a step further, he sent me these pants. And the difference in these two pants, this is the military issue ones that the wind just cuts through, and these are the wool ones. And I haven't worn them out in the cold, so I'm not going to pretend like I did. But it's the exact same material as this, it just comes in a different color. I think he's got black, he's got this olive drab, and then he's got the lynx. The lynx is really cool. It has to be done on like a, a specific loom to make this style. I think loom, I think I said that right. Anyways, but as you look at these pants, once again, you got the buttons done up right, you got the zippers done up right. I mean, look at the pockets here. You're out in the bush, the last thing you want to do is lose something. So he's got these two snap downs. And then on top of that, it's another zipper to make sure that your crap doesn't fall out while you're doing what you've got to do. Um, yeah, it's just quality stuff. You look at the side right here, he took the time to put in this webbing with the buckle so that you can take and cinch them down tight and not even wearing a belt, you know, like uh, for me I had some um, cry precision pants that I wore out there. To be able to take those wools and slide them up over the top of it and tighten them down, I only had one belt, it's super convenient. And then on top of that, where he placed these, instead of in the back, he placed them on the sides. So if you want to attach a knife or something else to it, you can put it on the outside once again without losing your belt. You look in the back, you see how he did the double the double little belt loops right there, because if you're a guy like me, you bend over, your, your bum crack showing. So, he puts these double loops in and it helps hold your pants up where they're supposed to be. Every ounce of its quality, you look at the seam lines on it, it's not one seam, there's, there's one, two, three stitches just on that seam right there. It's just how they do business. It's an American-made company, um, I'm in the military, and uh, when I was looking at their, their company, one of the things that stood out to me, you can make donations to Weatherwool, and they send these jackets to guys in Afghanistan, to soldiers, to airmen, um, to Marines. Um, you can look on there, and they, he doesn't have any photos of it for obvious reasons, but, but he's donating, well he's not donating, you're donating your money, and he's taking his product and sending it to our guys who are fighting overseas. Um, Last time I talked to him, him and his wife were having a conversation, you know, Ralph and his wife at Weatherwell were having a conversation about the zippers because they couldn't find a zipper that was completely American made. And uh, he doesn't want to cut corners. If he says he's American made, he wants to be 100% American made. Look, this is my honest review of the product. It is by far the best product out there. Yeah, the price is steep, but not that steep when you compare it to things that are in, in the light category. Sure, you go to Cabela's and you buy like one of their hybrid wool jackets it's going to be a little bit cheaper but if that's what you're into go for that if you want the best wool product out there i think this is the best wool product i know this sounds like a sell pitch but like i said he's not paying me i'm not getting anything else out of it it just is what it is it's a good review i hope of of a good product um, do with it what you will if you have interest i don't know how this works i guess you can like the bottom i'm not making more videos so i don't care if you like the bottom or not but I might review some other stuff if, if you put in there like, hey, I want to see, you know, I know you bought that silky saw or what did you do to your Leatherman. If that stuff interests you and I can help you in some way, I'd love to send it out to you. If not, you know, thanks for tuning in.